and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is revealing the magic. Uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulty starting out this morning. So um, that's why we're a little late to the show here. But it's wonderful to be here with you. And we're going to, before we get started with revealing the magic, good morning, good morning, Rosalind. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry to be late, but we had some technical issues and got them all straightened out, which is awesome. Anyway, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. And we're going to take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells and organs and bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction the temperature the pressure all the sensations the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all of those sensations to bring you present right here right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Dido. Great to have you here with us this morning. Um, we had a little technical difficulty this morning uh, due to a change of login um, uh, email for Zoom. So um, I just want to give you a heads up that that's been implemented, which is awesome. So um, today we're talking about Revealing the magic. So I want to put it out there for your consideration that perhaps we live in a very magical universe. And the only thing that is keeping us from that magic is the veils that we have in front of our eyes, so to speak. Um, and these are veils of predispositions and and thoughts and and behaviors beliefs uh spells uh i like i really really like this spell um idea it was interesting i was talking to a client yesterday and um they were telling me that they were tired they were really 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 busy there was all this um scheduling that they were contending with and and it was so fascinating because they kept telling themselves telling me telling themselves uh i'm so busy i'm so busy i'm so busy and when we tell ourselves that we're so busy so busy so busy that's going to work on our nervous system right? It's going to tax our nervous system. And most of us or many of us are really sensitive to that kind of energy. And so we get in this state due to saying, oh my gosh, I have so much to do, or just, I just have to get through the next couple of weeks. And the, the magic is or this is one aspect of the magic, it, uh, what, what I was talking about with this client was creating spaciousness. And we just did a brief relaxation moment to create spaciousness. And the, the magic is that when we're in this moment, 
this present moment, that spaciousness is there. And when the spaciousness is, it, is there, the universe just we, is filled with magic. We create space, we remove the veil to be able to be present. And all of a sudden, there's all this magic there that we then have access to. So what, what is remarkable we were talking yesterday about resistance and how, I think it was yesterday, <laughs> I don't even remember, but how, um, how by resisting something, we're affirming it, right? Here's the thing I don't want. Here's the thing I don't want. Here's the thing I don't want, right? And when we release that in the moment, when we allow for that spaciousness, all of a sudden, we're making room for the energy to flow, the energy of manifesting. I don't know about you, but I, I, lately I've been experiencing an acceleration of the manifesting. And sometimes it just happens this is another thing re about revealing the magic sometimes it happens so easily or so naturally that we don't even notice we you know we don't even connect the dots necessarily between what we desired and its appearing um so I'm wondering, this is, this is making me think of a situation in my own life about um, revealing the magic, because it's there all the time. It's just that we don't necessarily make space to receive it, and we don't necessarily recognize it. So there's this wonderful short film that I recently saw on Netflix, and I think it was... It, the title was something related to the man who could see without his eyes or something to that effect. And this is a phenomenon I I have read about before. And actually in the video, they talk about creating focused concentration, practicing with a candle 16 inches away, I believe it was, and practicing till you could just see the blackness in the flame and you could hold that concentration for an extended period of time. And then it, it enabled this concentration and focus, it enabled access to other capabilities and the guy then started practicing reading with his eyes closed. And I had read about a woman who was totally blind, but could see perfectly. Um, so she was seeing or perceiving, not with her eyes. And I have had times of kind of relaxation, meditation, whatever you want to call it, where I could not distinguish with the things that I was seeing, I could not distinguish whether my eyes were open or were, were closed. It was the same. I saw the same thing uh, with my eyes open and with my eyes closed. And, and I was seeing geometric patterns at that point. So I was in some kind of altered state, I guess. But eyes open, eyes closed, I saw the same thing. And I've been fascinated by this notion of being able to see without needing to have your eyes open. And here was this movie about it. So anyway, part of that is, is a deep desire to access these other dimensions of our capacities of our perceptions, of our capabilities. And also yesterday I was doing a session with another client who's been doing a lot of astral travel that I hadn't known about. And 
what is happening to them through the work that, that we are doing together and the work that they're doing with this other person with the astral travel and uh, what's happening is that they're becoming very very sensitive uh, to they're becoming more empathic and it's been really confusing because they didn't recognize it Yes, yes, yes. Oh my gosh, Dido, thank you. Dido says, perhaps you're thinking of the short movie called The Wonderful Story of Henry Henry Sugar um, by Ronald Dahl. Yes, 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 thank you. So it's not the man who could see without his eyes. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I really recommend that. If, you've, if, um, if you haven't yet watched it, please watch it. It's so wonderful. And I know that people would consider it outlandish, but given my personal experience, I, I know that this is possible. So anyway, with this other client that they were saying how, um, you know, all the, they're getting all these emotions and they, they, are starting to recognize that they're picking up stuff from other people, but they don't always know when it's other people or when it's them. So we started doing some things to strengthen their energy. I'm not a big proponent of armoring ourselves with all kinds of protections. I'm more about strengthening ourselves. You know, so uh, what we did was we strengthened her energy field so that it was it was vital and alive. It could still sense into other things, but things didn't just, she, it wasn't like she was a sponge anymore. So she could discern, she could recognize, but without having to feel like there was this onslaught of energy coming through that she didn't have any, any um, sovereignty around. And as we did that process, I think because she's so practiced in, in this astral thing, um, she said, I feel like a being. And what she meant was that she felt like an energy being. And what came up was her, uh, her, thought I'm not of this world and she got connected like really connected to her energetic beingness and when we can reside in that space of being that energetic being the world's all energy and we have access to another level of interaction with energy we can move energy even more readily and um the the person where we were talking about revealing the magic is able to use his energy to what what he said was remove cystic congestion energetic congestion from people so really really interesting that all this energy stuff is coming up I started the work that I do um, which is now more coaching I started out by doing energy work and um, playing with energy and and I've always been fascinated by other dimensions of experience and so I had seen, uh, well, I'll get back to that in a minute. So, so Rosalind said, your Claire's opening up, seeing geometric shapes, cool. There's a practice to look at a candle flame, closing your eyes and trying to see the flame. Okay, well, that, that makes sense. That's in line with the candle exercise from the movie. I, um, and thank you for that, Rosalind. Um, and... Anyway, uh, 
getting back to this movie, I was thinking I really, and I have always wanted to, but I, I was like, I really want to be able to cultivate my, my other, my broader capacities. And then all of a sudden this person shows up and um, I'm going to be doing this it's physical fitness and astral travel. <laughs> so, wow, how cool is that? <laughs> like, that's crazy amazing, right? So, because I, as a kid, I used to fly a lot. And um, when I was sleeping, but the thing is that there was a point where I remember seriously wondering was I just flying in my dreams or did I really fly like you I don't know if you're you remember the um tv series the flying nun uh and I think that you know like that sort of had infiltrated me also I flew before that but that that was something where I wasn't sure whether I I flew or I didn't fly and um, I've been wanting to be able to cultivate this, this even more magic side. Now, the thing is that the magic's there, the magic's available to us. And what's in the way is our beliefs, our fears, our um, maybe our enculturation, you know, fear of being too strange. You know, fear of being outcast, fear of of going into dimensions that we can't um, that that we're not currently familiar with. So perhaps fear of the unknown. For a long time, I thought that I, I wasn't very happy being here. So for a long time, I believed that one of the reasons that I wasn't able to astral travel or leave my body at will um, was because I wouldn't come back. And now, now I would, <laughs> now I can say I would. So um, as far as opening to the magic, uh, this, the one person said that now, they look for the magic instead of what's going to go wrong. And so many of us live under the spell that we keep casting upon ourselves. Something's going to go wrong. Something's going to go wrong instead of looking for the miracles and looking for the magic. And um, it's kind of, it's kind of like the difference between protecting yourself versus strengthening yourself. Um, that, that when we focus our attention, think about it energetically, right? If um, those of us who are engaged in these conversations, typically we're, we're wanting to transform the world. We're wanting the world to be the beautiful, amazing place in terms of humanity and peace and and ecology that it can be. And yet we are often very much prey to these dark stories about how things are falling apart and, and seeing, not only seeing, but being deeply consumed by the negativity of the world. And I invite you, I'm not talking about bypassing, I'm not talking about ignoring all that stuff, but when we allow ourselves to get sucked into it and consumed by it, what is it doing? It is quenching your light. It is darkening your light. It is pulling you into the crab bucket. Um, and that's a reference to, you know, as crabs are trying to climb out of a bucket, the other crabs pull them back in. And we want to get out of the bucket because the only way we're going to make the transformation that we need is to not be in that bucket. We need to be 
interacting with the world from another dimension of possibility. The, the quote from Einstein relating to you can't solve a problem from the uh, level of awareness or consciousness in which it emerged. So we need to be able to get to another, another perspective, another dimension of awareness in order to um, transform our world. So anyway, sorry again for the late start, but um, I invite you to step into the magic, make room for the magic, because it's there. It's there. We just need to make space for it so we can see it. Um, and that's it for today. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And until next time, so much love to you.